Thank you very much. So I grew up during uh, the space race, and hence I grew up in an era where science and engineering were celebrated and supported, think chemistry sets, microscopes, et cetera. Uh, in high school, I attended an NSF-sponsored summer program for 32 mathematically uh, gifted students that actually changed my life. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that I wasn't the least gifted of the 32 mathematics students, uh, but I had by far the worst grades owing to my abysmal study habits. And so that taught me several things. First of all, school was more fun when I was actually challenged. Uh, it's always a good idea to be surrounded by people who are smarter than you are. And I also learned, fortunately, that I too could get good grades if I actually did my homework. <laughs> As a pre-medical student, I floundered in a research laboratory on an independent study project that was uninteresting, unimportant, and as I would later show, undoable. Uh, my mentor rewarded me with a C plus and noted on my college transcript that Mr. Kalen appears to be a bright young man whose future lies outside the laboratory. <laughs> this, this convinced me that I was going to be a clinician rather than a scientist, and I approached my clinical training accordingly, and I even served as a chief medical resident at Johns Hopkins where I honed my knowledge of obscure diseases such as von Hippel Lindau disease. Years later, fortunately, I discovered, thanks to the outstanding mentorship of David Livingston, that I actually could do science, and my clinical practice taught me that we desperately needed new cancer treatments that would be based on a deeper understanding of cancer pathogenesis. I like math and science and medicine because I like solving puzzles and I like uh, results that are objectively verifiable. Now, as you know, basic science creates or gathers knowledge, and engineering applies that knowledge to useful purposes. For most of my adult life, I've benefited by the, from the wise decision in our country to let the public sector support basic science because the timelines and the deliverables are too unpredictable for investors, and to then let the private sector decide when a line of investigation is mature enough for application and commercialization. And even though I would argue that Bargain has served American biomedicine very well, you repeatedly now hear calls to treat science as though it was engineering tying funding to anticipated outcomes uh, and impact. Uh, this is very concerning because you may know that many practices that are useful in managing engineering projects are actually antithetical to good science. And so, for example, uh, building teams and harmonizing goals is very important if you're engaging in a very large and expensive engineering project. But early stage science is often driven by creative individuals who follow their curiosity and have the willingness and ability to go where the science takes them. And I think forcing scientists into teams and also uh, having them answer to predetermined deliverables is actually counterproductive because I think it runs the risk of creating herd mentality and tunnel vision and can stifle the heretical thinking that actually often underlies many transformative discoveries. So JFK knew that it would take approximately a decade to put a man on the moon because at that point this was largely an engineering challenge. It wasn't a scientific challenge. And I think it does scientists, but more importantly, patients and their families a disservice when fundraisers and policymakers oversimplify and overpromise with respect to the great biomedical challenges of our time. I'm very grateful and proud to accept this award on behalf of the many talented young people who've worked in my laboratory over the years to share it with such esteemed colleagues. And I also wish to dedicate it to my beloved wife, Dr. Carolyn Kalin, who died last year. Thank you very much.